Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service for the Festival of All Saints, November 3rd, 2024. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Our text for today from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. He said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God. They serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of their throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the risen Savior, Jesus, dear friends. Numbers play a big part of our lives, uh, so much so you could say that our lives are defined by numbers. In school, students receive letter grades that are based on a percentage system of numbers. Your grade point average in high school and college carries a great deal of weight when you're in school and also when you graduate. Someone wishes to further their education uh, after high school, you take an SAT or ACT test. It's administered, and the number of the score that you receive on the admissions test, along with your GPA, will, well, that'll dictate whether or not you're admitted into the institution of your dreams. When you enter the workplace, you receive a number. You're identified as an employee, as an, you might have an employee number, certainly you have a social security number. If you want a driver's license, you get a card with your driver's license number printed on it. Open a bank account or a savings account, and you receive a checking or savings account number. If you wish to pay online, you need to know the routing number of the institution that you're using. Enter a busy meat market or a doctor's office. You may be asked to take a number and have a seat. Our lives are inundated with numbers. Don't get me wrong, numbers are important. Numbers are a big deal. But we see in our text for today that the Lord describes those who are with him in numbers. And as we learn in our text, you're more than a number. While numbers are important and our lives are defined by numbers, numbers do not define you. For whenever you strive to live your life according to the numbers, well, that's a ploy that Satan will use to try to minimize you and your identity as a child of God. When you strive to emphasize your life on a number or numbers, you live up to the cold and harsh reality that you can never measure up to the number. When you strive in your life to try to reach a standard of perfection of 100%, you end up failing. That's because the old adage is true, nobody's perfect. You find out that you can't meet the expectation of the perfect number. You might get 100% on a test now and then, but you continually force, fall short in other areas. You may try to measure up to God's numbers of what he expects of you, but even in that area, you fall woefully short. See, God's expectations a standard of perfection is that you must be perfect as the Lord your God is perfect. That's 100% perfection in each and every area of your life. It's not how you score on a test in school, but it's in your relationship with God and others. So how do you measure up? Are you loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Or do other things get in the way of your relationship with God? Does the Lord have first place in your life? Is your language pure and holy? 
Are you reading your Bible daily? Do you pay attention during the worship service and during the sermon, or does your mind wander? Does your mind wander in prayer? How are you treating others? Do you respect those who are in authority, or you despise them? Are you worried and anxious about things in the future, about the upcoming election? Are you harboring anger or hatred in your heart against a fellow human being? Is your life sexually pure, or do you tell coarse jokes? Do you lust in your heart after another person? Have you told a lie, spread gossip, or rumors about someone? Look at your life. Examine yourself. How are you measuring up? The standard is perfection. When you miss the mark, you sin. The Bible says that no one is perfect, not any one of us, and sin pays off with death. That's why everyone dies. The numbers don't lie. You're a sinner and you can't escape the funeral home and that six-foot box they're going to put you in at the end of your life. But God's good news for you is that you're more than just a number. Even though you sin and don't live up to the standard that God expects of you, He loves you with an everlasting love. And this love moved the Heavenly Father to send His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, from heaven to earth to be your substitute in life and in death. Jesus met the standards set by his Heavenly Father. For you, Jesus lived his life for you as your substitute. He was perfect in every way, in thought, word, and deed. Just as the Father is perfect, Jesus was perfect and is perfect. He kept God's commands throughout his life, for his will was to do the will of his Heavenly Father who sent him. And that meant that Jesus lived not just the perfect life, but he died the perfect death on the cross for your sins, my sins, for the sins of the whole world. He who knew no sin became sin for you. Jesus was forsaken on the cross, damned on the cross by our Heavenly Father, so that he might take on the punishment that you and I deserve for failing to meet the 100% standard of perfection. And then later he rose from the grave on Easter morning to declare that your sins are forgiven. You have a relationship with God. And through faith in Christ, you have eternal life. You see, you're more than just a number to God. He has the very hairs on your head numbered because He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you. And you're not just a number in God's eyes. You're His precious child. Washed by water and the Word and holy baptism, the Holy Spirit has forgiven you all of your sins. He's given you faith in Jesus Christ. You're more than just a number. You're a blood-bought child of the Heavenly Father. To be sure, a sinner, but a sinner saved by the grace and mercy of Jesus, who has redeemed you, a lost and condemned person, not with silver or gold, but with His holy precious blood, His innocent suffering and death, that you will be His own and live under Him in His kingdom. You are one of the blood-brought saints, called to live your life now to the glory of God. You are now numbered with the saints, who give glory to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, before the heavenly throne. And so we have this wonderful picture in our text for today, where the number of saints are so great that they can't be numbered. John writes, After this I look and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes. And yet, who are these people? This vast multitude of humanity, too numerous to be numbered. They are the saints of God. The Christians who have gone before us, your parents, your grandparents, your husband, your wife, your children, friends, neighbors who have believed in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They are the ones coming out of the great tribulation here on earth. They've mourned the death of loved ones. They've hungered and thirsted for righteousness. They've experienced the variety of painful things that go on in this life. And yet through it all, they continue to receive the blessings of forgiveness and salvation from the nail-scarred hands of their blessed Good Shepherd. They believed in Jesus. They served Jesus. And they continue to give praise to Jesus, who's made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
they serve God and night in his temple. Jesus was and is their good shepherd. And he's your good shepherd too. He continues to lead and guide you today, even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death. Even though you suffer various trials and tribulations and pain and suffering in this life, you don't need to be afraid. Why? Because Jesus loves you. He's your ever-present help in times of trouble. Today, on All Saints Day, we pause to remember and reflect on those faithful saints who have gone before us. And we give thanks to God for the blessings He's bestowed upon them. We give thanks to God for their faithful witness. These saints were just like you and me, saved by the grace of God shown to them in Jesus Christ. And so, the Lord reminds us this day and encourages us this day and always to remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the Word of God, Consider the outcome of their way of life. Imitate their faith. Dear friends, you're more than just a number. You are a person redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And just as, as the saints of old have been faithful unto death and now receive the crown of everlasting life, so too may you be found faithful in Jesus. For Jesus will give to you the crown of everlasting life by His grace through faith in him, to, all, to whom be all glory, power, and honor, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep both our hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this abbreviated worship service coming to you from Redeemer Lutheran Church, located at 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio. If you'd like to join the saints here in worship, you're invited to do so. We worship every Sunday, 1015, where a different message will be proclaimed. Until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you.